imagination. Thank you for your love that is beyond expression. Thank you, our Father, our God. We appreciate you for another time in your presence today. We are in your sanctuary to praise you, to appreciate you. We are not in the mortuary. Lord Almighty Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord Almighty Father, even though there is tension everywhere. Lord, you keep us in your love. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you. Lord Almighty God, I've come before you today. Lord Almighty Father, not to speak, but to learn at your feet. Heavenly Father, Lord Almighty God, deposit your grace upon my life. Deposit your grace upon the life of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Lord Almighty God, speak to us. Speak to us, Lord Almighty Father, and let every word we are going to learn to do, Lord Almighty Father, let it be a blessing to our soul. Let it be a blessing to our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father, our God. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' wonderful, mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, um, at, the, at the first service, we discussed about building relationship with God Almighty. That when we build relationship with God Almighty, He will give us rest. He will stand for us at all times. And we will have nothing to fear. You will remember at the beginning of this year, our daddy in the Lord, Daddy Gio, said, Fear not. Because it is not for the for the fact that there won't be trouble. It's not because there won't be tension, but because the Lord is what? Is going to be with us. So our Bible text today for this message will be taken from the book of Isaiah 41, verse 10. Isaiah 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I, thy God, I will strengthen thee. Ye, I will help thee, I will uphold thee with the right hands of my righteousness. So shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. If we build a strong relationship with God, meaning that God will abide with us. And we said in the morning that if there is no relationship, I cannot come to your house and feel so very comfortable. You can't, even if you want to, if you have to discuss, we won't be informal. We will, everything will be formal, formal, formal. And uh, standing with you will be difficult. Sitting with you will be tough. But God is giving us his words today that is going to be with us. The title of our message will be When God is with you. And for us to discuss this, I want us to make this general declaration. Believing that God is with you. God is with me. So I want us to declare this to ourselves. God is with me. All the time. In the good and the bad. When I'm going through, when I'm doing great things. And when I fall. When I fail. In disappointment. Discouragement. Extraordinary trouble. And pain. God is all powerful. Always loving. And ready to help me. Right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. God is for me. When I can't see it, feel it, or understand it, God is for me. Even when everything fails apart, when it falls apart, and I'm, I'm on the brink of giving up, God is for me. God is for me in the hardest place. So shall he be in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will always be with us. Brethren, we are living in a tension-soaked moment. The world, even the strongest in the world, so to say, by word explanation today, everybody is scared. Now, there is a problem, there is a COVID that makes all of us now to be as if we are from the Middle East. Now we have to cover our nose we have to cover this, we have to cover that. 
and every day the tension is even getting us closer to God because we just have to pray. You don't know who is next. But evils will not befall us in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, if you look around you, you can count on your fingertips at least two, three people that you know or that you have had had died between January 1st and 31st of January today. Are you better off than those that have died? So it is by the mercy and grace of God that we are all alive today. The Lord of mercy will be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. Even when it looks like everything is working against you, the Lord is with you in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter if the circumstances are insurmountable. The God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, is with you in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter what you are hope against. Even when all odds are against you, the Lord Almighty is with you in the mighty name of Jesus. Where the enemy comes like a flood, God is on your side. It is a promise. He has said it. When they come in one way, they will do what? They will scatter in seven, seven ways. So that is the promise of God for you. When God is with you. God can only be with you when there is a relationship. God can be with us when we have what? Built a very strong relationship with God. Yes, in the morning we talked about being rooted in the word of God. It's only when you are rooted in the word of God that you will know you are building a relationship because you begin to understand who is this God, what does he, what does he expect of me, and what are the things I'm going to do. But if the book of Isaiah 41.10, technical please, the book of Isaiah 41.10 says that uh, he will be with us. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. Let us count on the words of God. It's a word that never fails. When God promised something, he never failed. He has no reason whatsoever to lie because he had nobody to fear. So, why would he lie to you? You only lie when you know that something can happen to me if I tell this man the truth. But God has no one to fear. So he's a God that will never promise what he cannot deliver. Is there anything God cannot deliver to us? So what we need to do is to move closer to God. What do we stand to benefit when we are closer to God? When God is with you, what do you stand to benefit? One, when God is with you, you will be victorious. When God is with you, you will be victorious. Let us look at the book of Judges 6, 14 to 16. Judges 6, 14 to 16. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of Midianites. Have, not, have I not sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, where we shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor, managed, and I am the least in my father. I mean, in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianite as one man. For Gideon to be encouraged to go into battle, what has he done? He has communed with God, he has built a relationship with God. He has the assurances of God, of God. That is why even in the morning, when we wake up, we have to do what? Because to, I don't know journey is too short, even within your house. There is a need for us to embark on stronger relation, building stronger relationship with God Almighty by being more prayerful. Communicate with God. Come with your God Almighty in the morning. For Gideon to be encouraged to go into the battle, God guarantee him his presence that I will be with you. Go into that journey. This prayer of God in the life of Gideon helped him with just 300 uh, men of war to conquer how many soldiers? 900,000 uh, soldiers.
of the world, of the enemies. It is the power of God. It is the presence of God that gave Gideon that unimaginable victory. 300 soldiers against 900 soldiers, uh, 900,000 soldiers of the, of the enemies. So the prayer of God was there with him. When God is with you, brethren, your victory is assured at all times. Because God is with you, that is why you are even in his sanctuary this morning to pray to him, to pray to him, to pray, him, pray to him, to appreciate him. Imagine the God that never slumber, if he should close his eyes like this, what will happen to all of us? So, the question is, how do we relate with God? What is my relationship with God Almighty? When you build your tent with God, he will never pray, he will never fail you. I pray today that Jehovah Nisi will be with you in all your ways in Jesus' name. The reason behind the exploit of Israel in, I mean, is because God was with them as they left Egypt to, to, to the land of Canaan. It was evident according to, when we look at the book of Psalm 114, it says, mountain and hills could not withstand them. Even river, even the Red Sea parted, parted ways. And Jordan gave way for, to allow them to cross. It only the presence of God that could make that to happen to the Israelites. Because they are covenant children of God. And one thing we all need to learn today is that when, you're, when, when you are secure and when you yourself you secure the presence of God, you are sure of victory of God Almighty in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. So, brethren, all we need to do this year, yeah, the month of January is over. We thank God Almighty. Today is the last day of January. Yes, we have had thousands who die by your, I mean, by your left, 10,000 10, by your right. With your eyes, you will see. You will hear it. But you will never come near you in the mighty name of Jesus. That God has given his he has, he has given his covenant that he wants to share with you. We have seen it. We've had it. Yesterday, somebody called me. I mean, sorry, two days ago, somebody told me, ah, uh, I feel like thing. Uh, it's available now. If you go to a job, there's a pharmacy be beside the Echo Bank. A, a cap of ivermectin is 50,000 naira. 50,000 naira, just a cap. If anybody is infected, okay, they say prevention. You will take eight, eight uh, tabs to start with. The question is this. How many people can afford 50,000 naira to even buy a drug? And who told you that that drug itself will effectively cure it? God is the only cure. God is the only strength. God is the only power. Because of the covenant of God in our life, we are, we are safe from every danger in the mighty name of Jesus. So may the journey of this year be easier than that of other years in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us communicate with God. Let us be stronger relationship in God so that I can give us rest of mind. Brethren, this is a period where I, I repeat again, where there is tension in the land. Even when you look at around you, it is the Fulani arts men that is actually scaring virtually everybody again. So, COVID 19 is somewhere, Fulani arts men, they are somewhere else again. Yes, COVID 19, there is the IFMX or whatever. What about um, Fulani arts men? Do we all have to carry guns? But when we are with God, the Lord Almighty, the God of hosts, will stand for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Through the presence of God, you will cross over, uh, cross every river, and scale every obstacle that lies ahead of you in the mighty name of Jesus. Two, when God is with you, you will be blessed. When God is with you, you will be blessed. Let's look at the book of Genesis 26, verse 1 to 4. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, 
And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of Philistine, unto, unto Gerab. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of the heaven, and will give unto thee or thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Now, one thing we need to observe from this is that when God is with you, there are certain things, there are certain ingredients that is expected of you. You must be obedient. You must be obedient. If you have really built a relationship with God, then you must learn to be what? To be obedient. When you are obedient, when you have built a relationship with our Father, then he's going to give you a good rest and will bless you in every way on all sides. Now, when Isaac was planning to actually go to Egypt, and God spoke to him and said, sorry, don't go to Egypt, stay in Gera. To anybody who will have said that, why do you say I should stay in Nigeria? When there is tension everywhere, and my colleagues are in America, they are in Europe, I think I have to, I have to, be, I have to be there. Now, Isaac did not challenge God. He did not ask questions. He did what? He was obedient. He stayed in the land of Gera. And what did he do? There was serious famine in the land. Serious famine in the land. Yes, because God has said he's going to bless him again, he did not take it for granted. What did he do? Because one, he must understand his purpose. Why he was there? There was famine. What's your plan? Because God has told you that you are going to be blessed. Does it mean you will not do anything? So Christians, the fact that we are children of God does not mean we are not going to walk. We must walk. And we must be strategic in our thinking. We must be purposeful. And we must action the thought. Don't just dream. Don't just dream. You have to action it. Because that was what Isaac did. During the farming period, Isaac went to farm. Why others? It's just like somebody farming in January, February. Why are you farming? There is no rain. Will it germinate? But think outside the box. God will bless your thinking in the mighty name of Jesus. Isaac planted, and at the right time, he had bountiful harvest. Don't forget, God has promised him. He had bountiful harvest. When you did not sow anything, can you reap? So others did not sow, so they reaped nothing. Isaac planted, he reaped bountifully. And at the end, because God has promised him, he's going to bless him, right? But he walked. Children of God, we need to walk. We need to be purposeful. While others were folding their hands, and they needed, there was need. They had to go to Isaac, they had to buy from Isaac. Isaac was selling to them and was becoming what? Richer and richer. He was blessed. If you don't have anything to give out, there is nothing to be blessed. Because he had something, he had value to add. He got what? He got something. So, brethren, despite the presence of God in our life, we must not fold our hands and say that because God has promised us, uh, then we are blessed. Yes, we are blessed. But something, if you don't give, it's, you have to give something to get something. God bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. So tell God to use his presence in your life to make you a blessed man or woman in Jesus' name. I prophesy to you that no season will work against your blessings in Jesus' name. Let's not say that because it's uh, January. January is the best time for us to start what? Well, to start planning ahead. Yeah, 2020 was tough. There was COVID-19. There was total lockdown in the nation. But what happened? Brethren, some people built their houses. They completed it. 
January 1, some people have started doing some great things again. God is with all of us. All we need to do is let us appreciate the fact that he has given us life. And let us appreciate the fact that he has given us brain to think, think, put it into prayers. The Lord will bless it in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. When God is with you, you will what? You will, you will surely succeed. You will surely what? You will surely succeed. Let us look at the book of Genesis 39, verse 1 to 3. I'm going to be very fast because of my time. When Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ismaelite, uh, Ismaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar was captain of the guard of, of, for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did as he served in the home of his Egypt, Egyptian master. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. Joseph was taken to Egypt as a slave. He was sold out by his brothers. The aim that man was that he would be lost forever. Don't forget that Joseph was a dreamer who said that he saw the stars of his brothers bowing to him. And the only way to ensure it doesn't happen is to ensure that he's to do what? Kill him. Destroy him. Send him to the to the, to, the, to the wilderness of slavery. He was sold out. Believing that that is a lost destiny. But because of the presence of God with Joseph, he found favor. And the Lord Almighty brought an end to his season of sorrow. The Lord Almighty brought, brought an end to his season of waiting. Because it was God that told him that he's going to be stars amongst his people. So if he had been sold to slavery, how can he now be a star? How can he be, how can he be a leader? But because it is God that never lies. Everything he has said came to pass. One, he was released from prison. Secondly, he was promoted. And second, even to the king. And he became the prime minister in Israel. Then to the fulfillment of God's promise with him, he became prime minister. Brethren, there are times people that you see in the course of your life that are working against you. They are working against the purpose of your life. They are not your enemies. But God is actually using them to catapult you to that level where he wants you to be. To propel you to where he wants you to be because they can only delay. They can only delay. They can never stop the purpose of God in your life. Now, the brothers, they never knew that while they were working against him, the, the man was simply working to preserve their life, just like Jesus came to preserve our life. You remember, Jesus tried to, we walked against him. He was crucified. But today, he is the one that is reassuring us of eternal life if you walk in his way. If not for Joseph, his brothers will have died of what? Of hunger. But while they were selling him off, they never knew what God had in stock for, for him. They never knew the purpose that the man is going to serve in their life tomorrow. When God is with you, no mountain will be insurmountable for you. Every transaction of God allows in your life, it is simply because he wants his name to be glorified. That you have a brother or a sister that is supposed to help you but he didn't help you. Because God never wants him to do what? To share his glory with him. God will do what he will do in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Joseph succeeded as a slave in the house of his master. His master was blessed. And by in return, he equally God blessed. May I tell you a simple truth today? That your breakthrough in life may be rooted in a person that you are assisting. The day you wake up to say you are tired of that fellow, maybe the day you block your channels of blessing. Brethren, do, don't ever feel tired of doing good. Don't ever feel tired of helping people. Don't ever, because you never know what God has in stock for you. You never know the role 
the person is likely to play in your life tomorrow. I've had this opportunity before when I was working uh, as an employee. I mean, as, as, I mean, as an employee. And uh, I remember some things happened between me and some people. I, was, ah, I didn't know it could, could happen. When I started my own business, it was my employee then. I mean, I was an employee. We were both em employees then. By the time I started business, the, boy, the guy had left that company too. He, had, he went somewhere else. And to be precise, he moved to BAT. And we made a proposal. And at the end of the day, we were called to come and do our presentation. Behold, I met this young man there. He just came to me and he treated me like a king. And I, I would say that for about three years, we had good business with the company. Just one little good you do today may multiply into millions tomorrow. Never stop being good to people. Don't look down on people. Pocket your ego. Be humble. Work with people as children of God. The Lord will bless you as you yield in the mighty name of Jesus. When God is with you, God can use some believers for you. Let's look at the book of Genesis 41, 37 to 40. Joseph suggests, sorry, Joseph's suggestions were well received by Pharaoh, Pharaoh and his uh, and, the, and, his, uh, and his employer. So Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man so obviously filled with the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. God was with Joseph. And so he used Pharaoh to bring him out of prison. He's, he was an he, I mean, he, I mean, Pharaoh is an unbeliever, for goodness sake. But God used him to bless, to bless his people, to bless his own people, Joseph. Now, in the course, in our journey of life too, the fact that somebody uh, is a believer does not mean that maybe that person is the one that will believe. And God can use anybody. He's a God of all flesh. He can use just anybody, any instrument to bless us. When he's with us, he will do what he say he will do. He's a confident keeping God. Brethren, I repeat again, let us drop our pride. Yes. Let us be humble. Let us walk the talk. It's not just saying it. It's not just preaching it. It is not just how, how big the size of your Bible is. Let us be humble. Let us be real. Don't be a man or a woman of double character. Um, Christian in the church. Something else outside. God bless you. Stop thinking that it's the only believer that can bless you. God will send anybody that he wants to bless you. Haven't you seen the course of your work life that people you even think that are not believers will help you? And it's, a, it's an allergy or it's a Muslim or whatever. If that is the agent God wants to use, then he will bless you. God will continue to bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Serve God and expect miracles on your way. No believer is permitted to be stranded in life. It is strong for you to lack effort as a child of God. Your heavenly father does not sleep nor slumber. So why would you lack effort on earth? It's impossible. When God is with you, you will become more powerful. You will become very powerful. Look at the book of Samuel. 2 Samuel 5 to 10. This is talking about David and uh, Saul. And you discover that you discover that from the book of 2 Samuel uh, chapter 3 verse 1 there has been a kind of rift the beginning of the war between Saul 
and uh, I'm sorry, between David and Saul, because David's supporters were praising him, and uh, Saul's supporters too, they were not feeling too good about it. Always remember, I'm not a football fan, I mean, fanatics, but I know, I understand my you or whatever is the one that is doing magic now. Am I right? Okay, fine. And But my son is a football fanatic. He, he loves Chelsea. And every point, at every point in time, when they do what they know how to do best, I will ask my son, are you changing your team? He said, Daddy, I don't even understand what is happening to this Chelsea. I'm sorry. <laughs> because the winning side is always what? The loudest side. It's always the shouting side. Do you understand? So you discover that people were pressing David. They were pressing David, and Saul was not really happy. And the Bible tells us that David was growing from strength to what? To strength. When God is with you, right, you begin, you continue to be stronger, and God will give you more strength, even in the presence of your enemies. There will be, your enemies will be reducing in numbers. Why you will be increasing in the mighty name of Jesus? Look at the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 7. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven ways. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. The, world, the Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you in one way, but they will scatter in, in, in seven ways in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you today that your strength will multiply. In the mighty name of Jesus, those who gang up against you shall bow before you in Jesus' name. In this year, God will be with us. And when God is with you, the Lord Almighty will give you what? He will give you refuge. He will give you refuge because it will happen. Look at the book of Psalm 91, verse 1 to 12. Everything you need as a Christian is there. The assurances. Is there for us. So, take note, when God is with you, he will give you what? Refuge. We are assured of that. We are assured of that. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from, your, from you in seven, direct, in seven ways. If you listen to these commands of the Lord, that is uh, Deuteronomy 13. If you listen to these commands of the Lord your God that I am giving you today, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will always be on top and never at the bottom. So shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, um, before we do the last prayer, I'd like to ask if there is any among us today that believe that his relationship with God has been questionable. And he wants to renew his relationship with God. There is tension in the land. And you know that who can I team up with? If I team up with man, I will fail. But if I team up with God, my victory is assured. If you believe your victory is assured with God, if you know that is a team that never fails, and you really want to team up with the winner, please raise up your hand where you are so that we can pray with you. You want to accept God as the Lord and Savior of your soul. Please raise up your hand so that we can pray for you. Let us pray. And so our Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your words that you have given unto us. Everlasting King of glory, we pray, Almighty Father, that our strength will not diminish in the mighty name of Jesus. Everlasting King of glory, because you have assured us, because you are with us, you will always give us victory. This year, O Almighty Father, we pray, O Almighty Father, for your presence in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. No evil attack shall come near our home in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, mighty God, pandemics may be flying left and right, O Almighty Father. Heavenly Father, Lord, mighty God, we shall not experience any evil in the mighty name of Jesus destruction will be far away from our home. Catastrophe will be far away from our loved ones in the mighty name of Jesus. The remaining part of this year, O oh Lord, mighty Father, your mercy will encapsulate us in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' mighty name, 
we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Oh, <laughs> 
Sunday school, 825 to 850. Then, departure is from that 850 to 855. When you depart, we clean the place so that people who are coming for second service, you know, uh, are made comfortable as well. Victory service, being the second service, starts by 9 a.m. Pregnant women, praise the Lord. COVID has its own positive. We thank God. God has made us be fruitful. During the lockdown, during the COVID period, many of our women, God has blessed them. So we are starting our prayers with the pregnant women today. And please, if God has blessed you with the fruit of the womb, please um, go to the minister's prayer room after the service for your prayer meeting. And God has been answering our prayers in that department. Any other announcements will be passed to us through the various fora that we have. God bless us. If you are watching with us for the first time, today is your first Sunday with us wherever you are. Please, can you just wave your hands? We want to receive you and welcome you. If you are downstairs as well, you are hearing us, please, can you come upstairs? We want to receive you in a special way. Is anybody watching with us for the first time? Downstairs upstairs. God bless you, man. Please, can you just rise up? Let's start for the rise up, sir. God bless you. Let's come forward and let's maintain physical distance.